Previously on My Kitchen Rules. Three teams' cooking skills were put to the test. From New South Wales, Deb and Ben served up their three-course meal, but fell way short of the mark. Scorched. From Queensland, childhood sweethearts Veronica and Shaddy blew everyone away. A grand total score of 70. Oh my God! For Melbourne workmates Rowan and Sophia, there were disasters. I'm very disappointed with the fish. What we served was, was bad. And there were delights. I think you did a fantastic job. An eight. $100,000 is on the line. The team with the lowest score will be eliminated. In the danger zone, Deb and Ben. Tonight, it's WA's turn, where the youngest team, Holly and Grace, have a lot to prove. We want to show everyone what we've got. We don't want them to fail. <laughs> but them failing sort of hinges on our survival. Will youth be their downfall? Damn. That's when I put down my knife and fork. Or will it motivate them to great heights? The game was on there at the table. Perth, Western Australia, and it's the morning of Holly and Grace's instant restaurant. Got our shopping bags, and we're good to go. Our instant restaurant is called Hot Summer Nights, and our theme is WA Summer. She was okay. Okay, let's go. go. All right. Tonight is our opportunity to um, really express um, what we love about WA. We want to show everyone what we've got. At just 21, the best friends and uni students have been waiting patiently for their moment to shine. Here we go. Welcome to this photo booth. I'm Holly. I'm Grace, and we're from WA. Grace and I have been um, best friends since high school. We call each other, you know, a good 11 to 15 times a day. We both talk over each other. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> cooking was our favourite subject all through school, and that is kind of where our relationship grew, really. We cook together all the time. Smell? Yum. How about? We're 21, we love to go out, we love to have a good time, socialise, eat and drink. Our love of food has just kind of like bonded us even closer together. We're really excited to represent WA. Being the youngest, we really want to try and push that stigma aside. We really want to do really well just so we can feel like, you know, we're valued in this competition as much as everybody else. Left, lefty Lucy. We can get stressed out or we can have a really good time and try and do our best and work, no, our best job. A lot of fun. We will. Fun or not, the girls know that with fellow WA team Mark and Natalie being knocked out of the competition... You were eliminated from the competition. They are single-handedly flying the flag for their state. But as the new round of instant restaurants began, Holly and Grace were quickly dismissed as being inexperienced. Yeah, well, we're high school, best, best friends, friends from high school. Since we were like yeah. 12 or something. I think my first impressions of um, Holly and Grace were that they were a bit airy fairy. I don't think they have what it takes. I don't see them as competition. I don't imagine them to be the fine dining type. I don't think they have as much experience. I don't think you should discount them. They've got the passion for it. But what are they going to deliver us on the night? That's, that's the question. As with all teams, Holly and Grace have just the morning to shop, and the girls have a clear game plan. Should we go get the um, olive oil and vinegar first? OK, yep. We're really excited for everyone to taste some of the beautiful foods and wines from Western Australia. This is the West Australian Moor River one, which is beautiful. Holly and Grace, my expectations from hot summer nights is um, really nice, light, summery food, you know? Served with a dash of pizzazz from the girls. We need 22 slices. For entree tonight, we have a strawberry halloumi and prosciutto salad with a balsamic glaze. That's a very West Australian dish for us. Do I want to be eating strawberries at the start of the meal? I never have, and there's probably a reason for that. Our main is the duck ragu with a fresh pepper jelly. Is that for the dinner party for tonight? Yeah. yeah. So you hope that it just falls straight off the bone. 
And for dessert, we have a coconut panna cotta with mango and a palm sugar caramel. Coconut panna cotta. Traditionally, Italians do it with vanilla. Sounds fresh, especially with the mango. All right. Done. We are right as rain. Finally, we've got everything home, and now it's time to decorate and theme our room. Grace is fantastic at making lists. We super organised. <laughs> Love it. But as the girls begin decorating their hot summer nights theme, cracks are beginning to show. We bought, you know, table runners and shells and flowers, and then putting it together, we we didn't know what we were doing. I'm getting a little bit stressed, actually. Guys, I don't know what I'm doing. I just don't know what I'm doing. I think I just felt um, really flustered and a bit all over the place. So the clock starts ticking. Cooking, here we come. And we started freaking out. They're like, I need to calm down. OK, we need to cook. Huh? It all just kind of got a bit too much for me and I just got a bit emotional. I can't start right now, I'm really sorry. I need, I need a few seconds by myself. So I just hopped into the bathroom. I need to calm down, you need to do what you can now. We're actually fine for time, seriously. <laughs> Literally 10 seconds later, she's on the ball, ready yeah. to go. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> all good. All good. Laugh it up. Laugh up. Okay. We're all good. All right. I'm okay. I'm okay. Far out, Brussels sprout. Couldn't have asked for a better partner. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Okay. We can look on our plan. I know what I'm doing. Okay. I know what I'm doing. So when I first came out of the bathroom, the first thing I did was slicing the strawberries and prepping them for the entree. Fruit works very well with prosciutto. The Italian tradition you use rock melon. But with the strawberry, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, Holly and Grace going out on a limb here by putting strawberries on for their first course. Mm, I'd have to say yes. I think let's just work faster than we've ever in our life, Grace. I basically started the main. In the duck marinade was red wine, celery, carrot, onion, the duck legs, obviously. Garlic, we had thyme. Duck ragu. It's basically another word for stew. It takes a long time to cook. They've got three hours. I think it's going to take every second of those three hours. I'm going to make enough pasta for 12. I then got cranking on the pasta. That includes one egg per person and then 100 grams of flour per person. It's literally flour and eggs. Anyone can do it. The fresh pappardelle. Now, pappardelle is uh, it's pasta and it's uh, thick ribbons. Let your all your emotion out into that kneading and <laughs> <laughs> get the muscles into it. <laughs> so there they're growing after my practicing in my pasta. Long pasta cooked for lots of people. More things can go wrong with it. It can stick together. It can cook unevenly. And it's harder to plate up. Let's get the duck on the go. Let's. I pulled it out and I separated the veggies and the stock and started searing the duck legs. I fried the vegetables and tomato paste off a little bit and then added the duck legs back into the pots with chicken stock. One thing that I'm not good at when I cook is measurements. Grace is good on measurements, I'm bad on measurements. I don't like measuring things, I just like to see how I go. So hopefully that was the right just then. She just sort of said to me, well, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do, but I think I'm pretty sure this is right. Like, I'll just do it. Can you just do me a favour and read this? Because I don't know what you've done. Yep, and sure. It makes me really nervous, really, really nervous that you're putting... Um... Grace is big on the measuring. I don't measure anything. It seems that Holly's not sticking to the game plan. Hannah! What? I'm just worried about the herbs going back in and whether they're supposed to. Could, can you just... If anything, the herbs are just going to do wonders. I'm more than happy, more than happy to swap jobs with you right now. That probably freaked Grace out a little bit. With just 46 minutes to go, Grace needs to move on to dessert and fast. So for the panna cotta, you heat the milk and sugar in a saucepan. 
After the gelatin sheets have dissolved, I'd add the coconut cream, make sure the consistency's right, and we're done. The key of the panna cotta is it can't be too set or too soft, and that is really hard to achieve. The last time our judges were served panna cotta was in Queensland, where a technical error tripped up sisters Tanya and Jen. Panna cotta mixers split up. Yes. I swear after this night, I'm never going to look at panna cotta ever again. Me either. Now we've got less than half an hour to go and we still look like this. <laughs> All I want to do is really get changed and just <laughs> quick, you know, beautify ourselves as much as we can within a two minute time frame. Your turn. What am I doing? What are we, oh, what? Everything's not ready to go. I was freaking out. I was not ready for the doorbell to ring. Who cares? You know what? We've done the best we can. It's a bit stressful. Where is our sugar? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Go on. Ah! Where's Mr. Lemons? Holly and Grace's instant restaurant is about to open its doors, but not without some last minute madness. Are we serving this? Let's just make another one. I was not ready for the doorbell to ring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God. Ah! I'm really nervous. <laughs> They greeted us in true Holly and Grace style, very bubbly and happy. You look at Happy faces, full of energy. You know, I think if there were any problems, I, it certainly didn't show. You know, they they looked great. So come through. That was when it was all laid out of what sort of theme it could possibly be. Oh my God, that is so cute! Now, guys, we welcome you to Perth, Western Australia, our hometown. <laughs> When we saw the thongs, it was a bit of a mixed reaction. A couple of guys went, oh, beauty, casual, and some of the girls went, oh, no, heels. Go for it. Hey. All heels and shoes off, off. thongs Tonight off. Tonight is about comfort and enjoying and having yeah. a good night. <laughs> I've got pink. Yay! Yay. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Very comfy. We all got a, a pair of thongs to take home with our names on them, and that was that was a really cute little, cute little. <laughs> Walking into the dining room, we had um, yeah, the table set out not beautifully. Beautiful beach photos on yeah. the wall, so it was obvious Great it was going to be a summer night. We had, you know, a nice little runner of stones and shells down the middle of the table. Um, so thanks, guys. If you guys would just want to sit down and relax, and we'll sort of come to top up drinks or help yourself in, you know, traditional Perth style, and and we'll enjoy get your it. Thank you. See you soon. While the guests relax and settle themselves in, for home cooks Holly and Grace... Stress begins. I think my mind was in a different place. Add more basil and mint. The mint is just That's there. done. Yeah, it needs basil and mint. I'm sorry, are you putting it all in? It's our turn, it's WA's <laughs> dinner party, what? No, no, my question is, did you just say you wanted the mint in here and then... I need to let my emotions catch up with my body right now. How how long's been cooking for? Since. I feel really disorganised. Can I take these whole? Is all the salad dressed? No. Well, we need to do that ASAP. The judge's arrival is just moments away and Holly's nerves are getting the better of her. Hull? Hull? A what? <laughs> you need to dress the salad, hole. Huh? So hold on. Strawberries, okay. prosciutto, salad, halloumi. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That was probably even more scary than the first doorbell. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> well, the door opened and there was big smiles and big, big excitement, I think. Come through this way, guys. We were very welcome um, straight away. Our restaurant is called Hot Summer Nights. Hot Summer Nights. 
pair of flip flops with a name on it, which was funny. So we hope you are very comfortable and you enjoy yourself. <laughs> nice girly colours on Thank you. <laughs> so Holly and Grace really set the scene. As you come through. For a chilled out, relaxed setting. I felt that straight away. Cheers. 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 And then we were back into the kitchen. Can we seriously do the entree now? Part of the presentation for the entree was a balsamic glaze. Paul was the queen <laughs> of the balsamic glaze. Yes. One line, dot, dot, dot. Starting there. Fierce concentration on dots was <laughs> happening, that's for sure. Yeah, I really like that. I knew that you Scrutiny on every dot. <laughs> Goodness me. I reckon five strawberries on each. Grace, just remember we really need to have height. I'm keen to put some olive oil. I'm yes. really not. Really? I just thought maybe it looks a bit dry, but we have, we've already dressed it. We've, we've dressed it, so... And with the final rehearsal of serving etiquette... When you serve, you're supposed to serve from the right and pick up from the left or other way. I don't know. After sort of a whole lot of practising, do you serve to the left or no. serve? Serve to your right. I was excited to get it out there. Do you serve to your right and pick up from your left or do you? All I know, when you go give your plate to Pete, go through Pete and Manone do that. We can, I don't care about picking up plates right now. Holly and Grace are about to serve the first course of their hot summer nights menu yet they're a little unsure of how the strawberry salad will be received. I think that I'm okay with the presentation. Like, it isn't perfect, but... But, you know, a salad's supposed to be, you know, a little bit quirky. <laughs> we can tell ourselves that. Yes, we'll tell ourselves that. Here you go, Minnie. Thank you. The entree, automatically the bells are ringing. It looked superb. They made it look better than I thought they would do. When we stood at the end of that table, that was the first bit of, oh my gosh, this is real. This is the first time we're getting judged and oh my gosh. They were <laughs> clinging to each other for dear life. They were just so pensive. And it's not apprehensive, they were pensive. I didn't prepare myself for that moment because how can you? You never know what it's going to be like. And it was pretty daunting. Whose um, ideas was this? We did everything together. Everything, the presentation, everything, the everything, everything was joint effort. Beautiful presentation. Just love all the different colours, the red, the green, lots of height on there. Beautiful. The presentation you've done with the halloumi is interesting. I haven't seen that done before either. And I think it works. Really nice. I think I tried some rocket and then some prosciutto. It was gorgeous. So then I thought, OK, Let's try a little piece of the rocket, the prosciutto, the halloumi, the balsamic, and a piece of the strawberry in one go. Hmm. That's when I put down my knife and fork. As soon as it came to the table, it's the first thing I could smell was strawberries. The foundation to be a great cook and a great chef is those classic building blocks of flavour matching. There's that balance between acidity and sweetness. As you bit into one of the strawberries, everything else was gone. The, the, the strawberries, for me, are just... It just... It doesn't work. Yeah, I think Holly and Grace were Shocked, probably is the word. We've made that salad um, a fair few times and we actually really love the strawberry in it. For me, the strawberries have killed what could have been a really nice way to start the dinner. We both said the same thing. 
Why? On est aussi dans notre DNA, ça. Apart from that, I just like the flavors, like the presentation. It's visually appealing. It's just that one thing wrong. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, that's thank you. We really appreciate the feedback. Yeah. Thank you. As soon as Holly and Grace left, I grabbed the olive oil that was on the table and dressed my salad. <laughs> Can't eat the, the greens without a little bit of something. I mean, it's the guy that it holds, it's moist. Yeah. We like to eat the halloumi cheese very moist and a little bit thicker. Yeah, I felt like I was eating matchsticks. But we got a bit of positive and a bit of negative. I think that went reasonably well. I think, considering how I felt about the entree the previous today, like, the only thing really that was wrong with that this was the, the strawberries. Of the and like, it's not like we cooked strawberries badly. Yeah. They just didn't believe that they matched the dish. After the entree, you know, with disappointed with strawberries, I just want to have a quick snack in the kitchen. And that looks really good. Any tips? <laughs> I was going to ask you the same question. There was uh, fresh pasta laid on the table, uh, ready to be cooked. I'm actually excited. I think you've done a great job so far. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. And we'll Don't disappoint on. me. We'll try not to. And he just said, it's looking good, girls. Don't disappoint. Hoping to turn the tide, Holly and Grace focus on their main course. Fresh pasta is a bit touch and go, so they need to time it to perfection. All right, Hulls, how are you looking? Can you please try that? I reckon one more minute. I reckon about three more minutes. Best other one, quick, 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 quick. Damn. I thought they were being quite risky. Fresh pasta for 10. The things that can go wrong is by overcooking the pasta or undercooking the pasta. Oh, you all right? You all right? I'm all right, quick, quick, quick and I was scared that the girls were doing too much. You right? Oh my god. You okay? Should I just get it up? This is a five-man job. And we only have two girls. When um, Grace and I make this dish in the past, there is generally a lot more gravy. Um, I'm a bit worried about quantities, that's it. This is due to me. Um, not being very good at judging amounts in large pots. One thing that I'm not good at when I cook is measurements, and I thought that would just go a long way, and it didn't. Uh, this isn't one of you. We've never um, run out of sauce this quickly like this. Although we really wanted Manu and Peach to get some really beautiful looking dishes, we wanted everyone's to look beautiful. Nah, no, how I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. At Holly and Grace's instant restaurant in Perth, the duck ragu is about to be served. But there's not enough to go round and the girls are searching for an answer. Oh my God, Grace, oh my God. What do, what do I do? Another solution was to shred the duck finer so it would create more space. <laughs> I don't know if that worked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Put the plate there, put pasta there, go. I'm not really happy with the way it looks. I don't think it's particularly neat. I was really nervous about the reaction of that. Main is served. I was always a little bit sceptical about the ragu and fitting in with hot summer nights. It's clearly not an average summer night's dinner, but we are willing to risk it and we want people to eat our favourite dish. It did smell amazing, like I clearly smelled the duck and I just wanted to taste it. After the entree, you know, we did something with strawberries, I just, I was hoping the ragu at least was going to be, uh, be good. Standing at the end of that table is possibly the most daunting thing I've ever done. I think the girls look like they were the three little pigs being eaten by the wolf. Were you huffing and puffing? <laughs> <laughs> they, they did look quite stressed. I just wanted to like laugh and cry and I just had so many emotions and yeah. it was crazy.
hot summer nights. Do you think it fits in with the theme? This is one of our, if not my favourite dish to cook in the entire world. I believe the presentation makes it look like a winter night. I was in the kitchen earlier on, and I left and I said, don't disappoint me. Well, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> It was good. You know, I was surprised. I was really surprised. Creating the summer theme, um, this doesn't go with that. The actual dish, though, I think you've done a, an amazing job. So, um, well done. Pasta al dente, I'm happy about. Very hard, very hard to keep them al dente, I suppose, when you make fresh pasta. Because it is such a wintry dish, you might need something else to cut through it. You know, some salad on the table, whether it just be some rocket leaves or a little bit of radicchio. The duck has been braised nicely, just very tender and, and flavoursome. It was duck, my favourite meat. They hadn't tried to trick it up. It was just good, honest, wholesome food. Happy boy. Happy girls. Bon appétit. We were so excited that we had got some really positive feedback <laughs> and I think that it also sort of reassured us that, you know, we can do this, we know how yeah. to cook, so yeah, that was really exciting. <laughs> we got it. We got that. Uh, they did a great job. You know, making your own fresh pasta, lots of fun. Oh, I bone. Oh. Then I got this bone and it like, it went to the roof of my mouth and oh, I was so, I was so not elegant. Sorry. The thing was, it happened to four, three other people on the table. You had Matt. I put a hole in the roof of my mouth. Did you? It was a beauty. I would have hated that to have landed on the judge's plate. That would not have been a positive outcome. That was really rude, sorry. Yeah. You okay? Mm. Unaware of the bones in the ragu or whether it will affect their scores, the girls power on to prep their panna cotta and mango dessert. I'm just prepping caramel for the dessert. I've got some palm sugar, water, cinnamon quills, and some kaffir lime leaves. Oh, great, smell this. Oh, awesome. I was a little bit worried about the panna cotta because we were using the new moulds. So we pulled one out. Magic. But while the panna cotta looks mm. promising, the palm sugar caramel is starting to cause a few headaches. I was very wary of the caramel for the dessert, the palm sugar caramel. I wanted to make sure that it was the right consistency. I, I think I just, can I have a tiny bit of space for a sec? Sorry, I'm just, yep. sorry, I'm just freaking no, no. out a little Go bit. Okay, so if it's like sticking. I know, that's the problem hole. Too oh. sticky. And unfortunately, I left it that little bit too long and it just turned to toffee. Do you know what I mean? It tastes like I'm eating literally like granules of sugar. What's changed? Something's changed. I know it's because it's, it's because it's got harder and it's I've no, no, completely like... effed it up. I know the consistency has changed. I know. At Holly and Grace's in Perth, two courses have been served, and with one to go, the girls are pinning their hopes on their panna cotta dessert, but their palm sugar caramel has turned to toffee. I've overcooked it. It's because it's got harder and it's... I've no, no, completely like, effed it up. I know the consistency's changed, I know. It's turning more into a toffee rather than a caramel. That's what's going on. With success hanging in the balance, the girls make a decision to leave the palm sugar caramel off the plate. We both just decided, instead of making something that we are not proud of, it's not going to be on there, make it simple, put more of the slick on each plate, panna cotta and then mango batons. Here comes dessert. Yummy. <laughs> when we're cooking for our friends and our family, we're confident that they'll enjoy it. 
When you're presenting a dish to Pete Evans and Manu Fidel, that's a whole nother story. The panna cotta was almost remnant of their hearts trembling. I think the girls were even more stressed than the previous schools. I think the stress just built up and built up and built up. I think they were gearing up for the worst. I was really upset about the dessert and I wasn't looking forward to the feedback. The feedback is just as important to Deb and Ben, who in last place are facing elimination. We don't want them to fail, but them failing sort of hinges it's on our survival. I looked at the menu and I looked at my plate and I looked at the menu again and I just asked the, the girls where was the beautiful palm sugar caramel. What happened there? Yep. It turns into a toffee. So, um, unless you want toffee on your plate, unfortunately, um, we couldn't produce the goods. And we, executive decision, we wanted to give you caramel, not toffee. We'd prefer to give you what you've got in front of your plates instead of giving you something that we weren't prepared to give you. And we're in this together. Good choice. It would have been terrible if they had decided to put uh, a burnt caramel on the plate. It would have rained the whole dish. Well, the palm sugar caramel, I'm not sure whether that would have added to this dish in any way, shape or form. I had to get my head wrapped around the cooked piece of mango. Uh, I wasn't a fan. I don't think it adds anything texturally to the dish. I think it looks pretty sitting on the top. I would have probably done a fresh mango just to keep in the theme and really get that flavour of the mango. I also think the panna cotta would have looked brilliant just by itself as well. And then I tried the coconut panna cotta. Spectacular. I love the flavour. Hot summer nights are back. As far as panna cottas go, for consistency, oh, I haven't seen better. It's just perfect. Grace did the panna cottas. Everything is team. The best I've ever, ever tried. And I've ridden a few. That <laughs> was, was better than mine. For Pete to say that is the best panna cotta he had ever eaten, like, that just has to be a lie. Like, we are Grace and Holly from Perth. <laughs> No. <laughs> but it's a, it's a spectacular dessert. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Presentation-wise, great. Very good. Yeah, back on track. It was like drinking a good mango smoothie. I was just like, wow, that's a great dessert. The odds aren't good at the moment. <laughs> The girls are definitely surprised me. I think I judged them to being a bit airy fairy and ditzy, but they've <laughs> come out and they and they've done a fantastic <laughs> job. <laughs> They're very yeah. intimidated and and impressed. Yeah. I feel like you are not appreciating, and we are not appreciating how good that feedback was. Grace, he said, <laughs> I've never tried better. Manu said, it's perfect. Yeah, no. <laughs> well done, Ray. <laughs> While Holly and Grace take in the judges' comments, it's time for the guest teams to give their scores. The entree was was good, and I agree that the strawberries were edgy. Main big points for the pasta yeah. um, to make homemade right. pasta and have it still to be fresh. And... Yeah. So the dessert, um, the panna cotta was beautiful, but I think that the the mango overpowered the panna cotta. Um, oh, they forgot the palm sugar caramel. Palm sugar caramel. It's a shame. Yeah. I love caramel. I know, I you would have, would have loved, loved that. to have tasted that with yes. it. They're all voting now, and there's nothing more we can do, and we That's did our it. very best. We did. So, well done, friends. <laughs> so, the overall 
night that Holly and Grace definitely deserve a seven. Cheers. Cheers. Well done, girls. Mm. Um, we gave you a six. They got the presentation right, but unfortunately the flavour didn't do yeah. it for me. We've decided to give Holly and Grace a seven out of ten. They got most of the dishes okay, and they definitely got the restaurant style of um, atmosphere. We'd like to give Holly and Grace a six. The bone threw me off, not just mine, it yep. was four, you know, four plates yep. on the table. Yep. That's dangerous. Who knows what the future will hold? You know, we're the youngest. We sort of feel like maybe we're the underdogs in the competition. It's been a huge day for uni students Holly and Grace, who've risen to the challenge of turning their home into an instant restaurant. They've served their three-course menu and now await their scores. Holly, Grace, your guest teams combined total score is 26. I don't even know where my head was at. I was just like a core of someone standing there. For us to still be in the competition, we have to sit there and go, I freaking hope they hell, it up. I they hope have they to fail up. dismally. So then it was time to deliver our scores. I was just holding Holly so tight. I was about to burst into tears and I was just dreading the feedback. The judges will now award up to 10 points for each course. The game was on there at the table. I could feel it. The entree. I thought it looked beautiful on the plate. Unfortunately, the strawberries didn't suit the dish whatsoever for me. Love the prosciutto. A little, little bit more would have been lovely. But the strawberry killed it for me. So for that reason, I'm giving you a five. The strawberries just overpowered it. What could have been a great dish was ruined for me. And for that, I'm going to score you a four. We had expected a five. Um, four was pretty bad, and that was actually a bit of a shock. The main course didn't suit your theme whatsoever of hot summer nights. I would have loved to have seen a salad on the table to lighten it up. Not a fine dining dish, but the pasta were cooked perfectly. The ragu was beautiful, plenty of flavour. And for that, I'm giving you a seven. Thank you. I enjoyed it. I'd be happy to get that in a restaurant. And for that, give you a seven. Thank you. Thank you very much. The dessert of panna cotta with mango was nearly perfect. The pan fried mango was the detraction from perfection for me. I don't know if the palm sugar caramel was going to be a plus or a minus, but it wasn't there. The panna cotta itself, that, that was perfect for me. That was, that was the best panna cotta I've ever, ever seen and ever tasted. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was good, it was beautiful. So I decided to give you an eight. <laughs> you brought the theme back of hot summer nights in spades with that dessert. And for that, I give you a nine. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Thank you, V. Thank you. Yeah, we love cooking. Yeah, Grace is amazing at making panacottas. This is Pete Evans. <laughs> like, are you kidding? You need at least 49 points to stay safe 
in the competition for now. And you need 70 points or more to go into first place. I had predicted that we'd get somewhere between 40 and 55. Holly and Grace, that means your grand total score for tonight is 66. My apologies, I had such low expectations that, and they, they personally broke through my expectations. And I don't think anyone at that table ever thought that the girls would be able to pull something like that off. Well, thanks very much for a great evening, but uh, it's time for us to leave. So, thank you again. Thank you. They've proved themselves as real contenders. No one had taken them seriously. Mwah. I'll see you in South Australia. These girls can cook. See you. See you. See you. Bye. <laughs> Oh, what is that? <laughs>Holly and Grace have a grand total score of 66, moving them into second place. And with only one dinner event remaining before elimination, their position in the competition is, for now at least, secure. There's one more dinner left to go. We are on the bottom of the rung at the moment, and I don't like coming last. I hate it. It's Matt and Melissa's turn, so that's going to be interesting. Good luck. Ha <laughs> <laughs> you want a pop-up restaurant? Well, have we got a surprise for you? I know we won't disappoint them. They'll have a bloody good night. All right, let's chop to it.